may proclaim and hear your good news, all to your glory. In the name of Jesus. He may have been the, or 
she may have been the disciplinarian of the world at the time, but God was so loving that he didn't, I'm going to use he a lot, I'm sorry, I'll try to change it, but God is so disciplined that he loves us so much, I mean, that he wasn't allowing us to stay in time out. Right? You know what the time out is? When you miss the you have to count to three minutes. And not doing it. Well, God didn't want that for us. So what God did is that God's self in, in, in human form to the person of Jesus Christ, who then paved the way for us to be in relationship with God. And then through that faith, we were ignited with the Spirit so that we have access to the Spirit in a way that never was before. And we have a variety of images. And I, I won't go too much into this, but I was able to sit down and talk and um, listen to. Um, a monk, an Irish monk, uh, I think he was Catholic as well, and he wrote lots of books. <laughs> he was a quantum theorist. His name was Jan Arbor. <laughs> and um, I like what he had to say, because he was very much a proponent that there is no hierarchy in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And his proposal is that the Spirit of God has a big bang theory, and that God was created from Spirit, who created the world, and Jesus is the air. That's where he kind of loses me a little bit, but it's an interesting idea that of the way we were created. And now I'm not one to like to talk about myself. I really don't. I actually had criticisms from my training that I wasn't very open about me. But I think at this beginning stage, it's good to share some of these things with you as we get to know each other. So I won't be meeting me all the time, just a little bit at the beginning. But I want to share with you something that I came across in my understanding of the Trinity and how I see the Trinity now. Now, have any of you heard of guided meditation? I don't like to meditate as easily. It's not, it doesn't come easily to me, but this was interesting. And I participated this in this guided meditation twice, once at the beginning of my education and once near the end, with two different outcomes. And the guided meditation began with a call for us to walk into a forest. And I walked into a forest. And right away, you encounter God. And what does God look like? Who is God to you? And for me, God always has me. I think God has gender. I don't necessarily think God looks exactly like us. I think the way the Spirit's more like God. But I always have to have hands for something. And in this vision that I had of who God was the first time, the hands were there out. You could were actually, I forgot to tell this at the 8 o'clock. Our feet, I also saw feet too. Like, you know when you sit at the feet of God? Like that image of the first, like Abraham Lincoln's statue with the hands out. Um, and so, but in that, you didn't see anything else, there was a big sphere of spirit. And in that sphere was the hands and God's feet, and Jesus standing there to the right, just as Jesus would, I suppose. And I was on the outside looking at it, and how wonderful it was. And that was my first experience of what I understood as the Trinity. There's no explanation for how those three people distinctive connected, but they were all one at that moment. I was just, and so I thought it was beautiful. And to be able to rest in the mystery of that was perfectly fine with me because I experienced that vision. After that, I walked into a cave for some reason, and in the cave was a stall and a Bible, and it was sitting on a stone, much like the empty tomb, you know? That's how I visioned the empty tomb. And it was there. The second time I had this guided meditation, I was standing inside the globe of energy. And when I walked into the cave, I was wearing the stole and carrying the Bible. And what I love about that image is that when we try to put God into a certain doctrine, into a certain way of thinking about the Trinity, it's easier for us to stand on the outside because we're not engaging in that mystery. And to know that we're part of that creative God, that we are created in God's image, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
to, to know that we are incorporated into that loving triune is an amazing feeling that I think we need to embrace more. To stand in the presence of God in all God's image is a blessing. And as we move forward, I hope and pray that we recognize that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit make it possible for us to do love and to give love and to participate as God's hands and feet in this world. To know that we are forgiven, that we are created in love is an amazing thing, and that's what the Trinity is for us. However we do. Continuing on page 358 and standing as we are able, let's confess our faith in God the Father, the Creator, and the Spirit, and the Son. We believe in one God. Praise from the 
mouths of infants and children. Let the leaders of our nation and all in authority throughout the world follow your wisdom, know your peace, and create communities of passion and love. Blessed Trinity, one God. Amen. In your spirit, you reach everywhere to bless all humanity created in your divine image. May but a little lower than the angels, yet adorned with glory and honor, send forth your wisdom to direct the human race that all may listen to her voice and live into the fullness of life as you intend. Blessed Trinity, one God. Amen. You have led us into a good community where neighbors attend to one another with mutual care and accountability. Let us hear the call of wisdom and understanding that we may live creatively and increase the measure of truth, beauty, and goodness that can be shared among all people. Blessed Trinity, one God. Your divine wisdom rejoices in this inhabited world and delights in the human race. Let our suffering produce endurance, and endurance produce character, and character produce hope, which does not disappoint us. Here are our prayers for those whom we intercede, especially the Reverend Thomas Hubbard, Josh, Sharon, Ben and Liz, Gary, Christine, David, Les, Bessie, Mary, Teresa, Barb, Michael, Robert, Michael, Carolyn, Cynthia, Paula, Kim, Tyler, Brian, Jean and Bill, Adair, Brian, Linda, Michael, Richard, Melvin, Robert, Beth, Fran, Bill, Elliot, Christine, Colleen, Madeline, Andy, and Caitlin. Accept our gratefulness for your kindness, for your goodness and blessing towards us. Receive into your eternal life those who have died, especially 